Hello and welcome to the show. I am back on automation with a, another challenge. Today, I'm going to be trying to build the ultimate getaway car. The year is 1996 and I want to build the best vehicle to use as a getaway car. Now, that of course means it has to be pretty fast. It has to be pretty drivable, but also very important is we need to be able to carry a lot of stuff. When you're robbing a bank or robbing a nice gold deposit somewhere, you're going to want to be able to fit a lot in the back of your vehicle. So the uh, little sports cars like this NSX, for example, not going to be the way to go. Could go for a pickup truck. Of course, that has got a very, very large uh, area for cargo, but then it's going to also be quite heavy, quite cumbersome, and not so good at the whole getting away part. Good for the carrying, not for the getting away bit. Could go for a kind of fast SUV, but again, perhaps not so sporty in the old handling department. I think the best compromise... An estate car. Relatively low drag, actually, on this particular one. It's 1,300 litres of cargo space, 1,700 litres of cabin space, which is actually not that far away at all from the SUV, and I reckon we'll be able to make a better, sportier car out of this one. So, naturally, we're going to go for the estate car. Again, we've got the weird wheel thing going on. Don't ask, I don't really know. Now, we want to have the car be fairly affordable. You know, we're not going to make it out of carbon fibre. You know, you're not going to have a carbon fibre body on your getaway car. Uh, we're going to, yeah, want it to be uh, pretty pretty strong, but also, yeah, affordable. I think we might just go for, for basic. We might just go for steel on this one. We probably don't want to have it out of... Um, out of fiberglass and so on if we're coming out. You know, might have to get a little bit argy-bargy with the police cars giving chase, so we're going to go with steel. Uh, for the chassis, again, we're just going to keep it simple. I'm going to go for the uh, ladder chassis, uh, chassis material. I mean, we don't really have much massive choice here. Might as well go for some corrosion, corrosion-resistant steel. Engine placement, we're going to want front longitudinal, front suspension. Now... We are going to want to, or I'm going to have to be a little bit careful, we don't want to diminish the load capacity too much, but for the sake of handling, I don't think we're going to want to go for the, the solid axle. I think we're going to want a double wishbone suspension at the front. Now, at the rear, we have got a little bit more in the way of options. We do want to try and kind of keep the sportiness up. Uh, Multi-link actually might not be a bad idea, because it's better. <laughs> it's better sportiness, tameness, comfort than double wishbone and it doesn't hinder the off-road and the load capacity as much so we'll go for multi-link at the uh, at the back so that can do plenty of work in there of course we're going to want the estate car body it's going to be a big car this is not going to be a small vehicle but again we, we need we need the size if we're going to have the load capacity on it so there we go uh paint wise of course, we couldn't possibly paint it orange. We don't want it to uh, be in any way, shape, or form related to fair race industry. So we'll go for a we'll go for a, a black. Well, that's not quite as darker a colour as a, that's kind of more grey than it is um, black. Oh, ooh. <laughs> doing there we go. That's more like it. Uh, a nice nondescript, nondescript estate car works for me. Okay, on to the. Uh, interesting part. Ooh, I wonder if they will fit where I want them to fit on the front of this car. And they might be a little big. We can probably, oh, probably squeeze them into kind of that gap along there. Have them sit in at the front for the headlights. Uh, actually, they can probably be a little bit bigger. Because <laughs> the downside of having made the car black, of course, is actually trying to see the uh, the lines for like the bonnet here, for example. Not the easiest. I'm trying to line this up. Uh, with that line of the bonnet, uh, like so. There we go. Sensible looking headlights on the car. Actually, it was quite angry. <laughs> looks like an angry car. That makes for good getaway vehicle. Uh, angry car, good getaway car. Uh, shall we have... Uh, shall, I was going to have like little fog lights down the bottom, but I might uh, put in the grills first and then come back to them. I think we're going to want to have a little thin grill... Something like this, maybe with a bar across it. We'll see what that looks like on the front. Something with a, with a bar across it up here. Again, people have said uh, and so on that the grills and vents currently aren't required for cooling capacity on the cars. It's not something you have to worry about so much, but I still want my vehicle to have 
you know vents and so on otherwise it looks like the tesla model 3 and it just looks weird just looks we were <laughs> we've got so used to cars having vents and so on that when they don't have vents it looks doesn't look right doesn't look right at all um i'm not sure i want the oh we can have a very very big fight yeah there you go. we'll keep the we'll keep the angry look going on with the <laughs> with this car it's a little bit more difficult actually with having painted the car black to get the uh kind of definition in some ways with the with the vents and so on i'm still slightly annoyed i say still slightly annoyed for some reason i can't get the side vents to ever quite look right on these cars this might actually need to be a tad taller uh, maybe not quite as l yeah maybe sit in there uh yeah kind of match the height of those side actually that doesn't look too bad at all at the front um yeah i'm quite pleased with it. i've made a okay looking front end of a car what's going on that's definitely not right. <laughs> definitely not right at all how can we ruin the back of the car that's generally the way it goes we should probably give the car like a uh, little indicators along the along the side of course we don't want there to be any reason for the uh, for the plod to come and have an investigate of our car it's got to look completely normal to the to the untrained eye so yeah indicators along the side uh brake lights oh we're not... uh, i guess maybe these will fit in there oh they're tiny brake lights can we like extend you up we're gonna look a little bit weird i have a feeling um, I don't really have very much, much choice in terms of tower lights on cars in this game at the moment. And they also want to sit curved. I want them to sit on there. No. No, I don't like them at all. I think we are going to... Ooh, what about if we were to have... What if we were to have... Uh, I can't quite have... Maybe a little bit smaller. Have... Nah. I think we're just going to end up having brake lights with part of it being in the tailgate. It, it's, we just don't quite have the right ones. I could probably find, I need to look for a mod for those at some point for for more selection in terms of uh, of brake lights. I have got Mighty Wings installed. We're not going to have Mighty Wings on this car. However, we have got Mighty Wings installed. I'll give them a quick test while we're here, of course. Uh, shall we then grab... I might do a similar sort of thing at the back of this car. We'll get... Oh, I forgot to do like fog lights at the front. We'll grab like a vent down here... And then, or a, a grill down there, and then vents at either corner. I think it was these ones we had at either corner of the car. Stretch that out, maybe. Squish them up a bit, and uh, place that down there. Extend that. Is it the right height? Actually, might be a little tall in this section. So, yeah, we'll drop it down a tad. Perfect. And then we will grab the exhaust while we're working around the back of the car. Exhaust coming out of there. We will have one on that side. Perfect. Right. Uh, wings. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go show off the wings that we have got. The whole bunch of different styles of wings are here that we could possibly, possibly put on the car. Actually, it might have issues going on this vehicle. I just thought because it has not actually got a normal boot. Uh, there we go. Okay, it has now finally put itself at the top. So yeah, we could have humongous, humongous wings on the uh, top of the. <laughs> Top of the car. There we go. Look at that. Mega downforce at the back. Uh, yeah, it's not the easiest vehicle for putting wings on, I shall be honest. But yeah, there's a lot of different ones to uh, to choose from here. Uh, there we go. Look at that for a mighty wing on a car. Not putting it on this one because we've got to look discreet. However, it's a, it's a really cool mod. Really cool mod indeed. If I can get the link to work from Steam, I will link it to the Steam Workshop so you can find it yourself. As I highly, highly recommend it. Let's get a fuel filler cap in there. We're going to need some door handles. Door handles, there we go. Uh, we'll go, for, go for, for all blacked out in this car. Door handle there. And another door handle there. Of course, we want to have as much... Uh, as much kind of uh, seating inside for as, as big a team as we could possibly need in our uh, <laughs> in our endeavours. Uh, wing mirrors, we're going to need some of those nice small little compact wing mirrors. Actually, they're quite nice little mirrors. Uh, actually, they can go on either side. Perfect. Actually, it doesn't look terrible. <laughs> it actually doesn't look terrible. Ah, and of course, we can go for some number plates we very much need number plates on the car oh hello we don't want we don't want that uh, <laughs> we don't necessarily want a wing on the i mean i'm normally a fan you know a fan of a fan of having wings on cars but maybe not on the front bumper of the car that we're trying to be discreet with 
And there we go. No badges on it. Not going to be associated with anybody. Uh, and then that's everything, I think. Wheels. Uh, uh, let's go for again. I'll just go for the wheels I always go for because I <laughs> like them. What a miss. Ooh. Oh. We can write stuff on the car now. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> Hadn't found this section before. That's really cool. So you can have like your little badges. So if you when when it comes to like building the the, the campaign and so on, uh, building cars for like the campaign and and whatnot, you can have like your little um, models. Uh, differentiated with so if you're going to put a turbo in it you can have a little turbo logo I was planning on naturally aspirating this car um, however oh they're really cool yeah you can have a lot of fun you can have a lot of fun building up these and yeah there's there's all sorts of um, sort of uh, fonts and so on we can have little arrows and uh, 4x4 stickers and whatnot that's really cool I, I like that I like that an awful lot not gonna be used on this car however that's neat right engine time Engine time. Now, do we go? I haven't built an inline six for ages. We could go for an inline six. Of course, I mean, V8 is an easy option to go for. Um, V8, V10, V6s, and so on are the easy, well, I say easy options to go for. V6 is good for being compact. Uh, inline six, we have got a decent engine bay to work with on this car. You know what? Let's go for it. We're going to have it all wheel drive, I think. It's probably a good idea. Uh, should we go for aluminium block? Yeah, let's go for an aluminium block. How big? Ooh, okay, so we can't have a giant engine. We go for a 3-litre i6, maybe? I wasn't planning on turbocharging. It might not have enough power. Um, you know what? We'll give it a go. We can go for more in the way of stroke. Now, we won't be able to get as crazy RPM out of the engine by doing this. We'll probably be limited to about 6,000 RPM. However... We have got, you know, an extra litre capacity going on. So we'll give it a try. I can fiddle around with that if needed. Uh, we are going to go for a dual overhead cam. We'll go for uh, five valves uh, per cylinder. We can get... Uh, we're not going to go for quite a, um, a ALSI, aluminium silicon, or something like that. Slightly different, uh, slightly different version. Uh, slightly lighter than the aluminium, if you like. But we will stick with aluminium uh, construction for the engine. We're probably going to want to deal with RPM. In fact, billet steel is the way to go here. Uh, we are going to want to deal with our max RPM when we can here because the stroke's relatively long, a lot longer than I would have probably... Yeah. I say that, though. I don't actually think having these bits increased RPM will help too much because the stroke will still limit it overall. Um, I guess maybe just go for forged then because we're probably not going to be pushing that piston's limit. We'll come back with that. We will go for variable valve timing. I Want to keep it naturally aspirated, I think, uh, for all of this. Injector, we will go uh, multi point. I'm actually surprised Max Power that reckons 364 is what I can get out of it. Would have thought I could have got more. Ah, oh, okay, so we go for that. Max Power, yeah, but, okay, so that was reckoning it for a single um, point injector. We're going to want to go for per cylinder. We're not going to go full on race car for this because again, remember, this is this is a road car. It's supposed to blend in and so on with normal traffic, run on normal fuel. Uh headers, let's go for long tubular on that one. Exhaust diameter, well, we'll probably stick that up a little bit. Uh, it does have to be road legal, so we'll have to have a catalytic converter on it. Uh we will go for perhaps I mean, we don't want it to be too shouty aggressive. Look at me. We want it to kind of be a little bit discreet. We want it to be capable of being fast, but we want it to still be a bit discreet. So, overall, from the basic stuff, we're looking at 252 horsepower. That's not too shabby in terms of power, certainly. Uh, we can only get about 6,900 RPM out of it. Yeah, I mean, that's to be expected with what we've got going on here. Let's stick up. I mean, we really want to be getting a sort of four, 500 horsepower out of this. Now, <laughs> that might be asking a little bit too much of this engine. We'll see what we can be doing here. Uh, we can yank the compression up with this. Oh, there we go. 334 horsepower so far. Uh, then let's see what else we can do. It's kind of just yeah, figuring out what I can, what I can increase and what I uh, can't increase. I don't really want to have to go... For, oh, do we... Yeah, we can go yank there. That's more like it. 394 horsepower. Now, of course, I'm kind of used... I say kind of used to be building crazy, silly, high-end engines and whatnot. 300 or 400 horsepower is still a lot of power in a uh, in a vehicle. That is, that is not low on the old power spectrum. It's a shame I can't get more RPM out of it. I don't really want to... 
run risks of damaging the car. Because I have a horrible sneaky suspicion if we lower this a little bit. If we lower this kind of down a tad, uh, can we then push... How much more can we push the RPMs? Uh, yeah, so we can kind of get a couple hundred more RPM out of it. Right, what happens if we then... I really want to get 400. There we go. 400 horsepower. 300 torque. Uh, oh, back down again. 402 horsepower, I think. is about, yeah. 402 is where we're going to be at. Um, also, thank you to the people I have figured out... Uh, <laughs> From reading comments, figured out a few more things about kind of dealing with uh, the fuel octane and the compression ratios and whatnot. I tend to be really bad at having compression really low to try and make stuff work. So I was playing around, try, just basically trying to learn a little bit more about the engine building. Uh, so I, th I think I'm doing a bit better job. It's a lot smoother a power curve. I am avoiding, of course, going for the turbo uh, <laughs> this time around. Uh, yeah, fairly decent smooth power curve. It's a decent amount of torque. 300 torque is it's a decent decent amount from the from the inline six here um shall we then go and fire it up i'm okay with this for now i don't think changing this around is going to give us much more yeah we're kind of at the the peak value right there shall we go Ooh, what if well, the headers are slightly i guess it'll probably be when it gets a really high rpms it wants us to be i don't really want to go for the race tube because that's going to get very very expensive I say very expensive. I mean, it's going to be a little bit expensive overall, this car. We'll keep it as it is. Uh, let's go for some manual testing. Listen to our 4-litre four four liter inline 6. Yeah, it's not a bad, not a bad sounding engine. Of course, a very different sounding engine that we get from this. I'm okay with... I'm okay with that. It's, uh, yeah, not a bad engine whatsoever. Uh, various statistics down here. Smoothness, 75%. That's probably about the most smooth, most smooth, smoothest engine I've ever built. Throttle response, not bad. Noise, I uh, don't know if lower is better or higher is better. I don't know, it's quite a lot of noise. Um, emissions, you know, is relatively high. Fuel economy isn't great. I'm never good at building those. I, it's just too tempting to go power. I mean, Ford, I think that's supposed to end up being about 14 miles a gallon. Eh, I mean, we're going to be pushing the car. It's a getaway car. It doesn't have to be doing hundreds of miles on a tank. It just needs to not run out of fuel uh, every time it leaves a petrol station. Uh, I think everything else looking pretty good. Engine's not too heavy. Uh, material cost is a, a decent, powerful engine, so it's going to take a little bit of material cost to do it, but not horrendously expensive. Okay. Okay, we're looking good. I might just see if, if we up the quality in here. I know it's going to cost us a little bit of money, but does... Uh, oh, no, we're not in this bit. We want to up the quality in the pistons. I just want to get a couple hundred more RPM out of it. Just so we can... There we go. That's what we wanted. <laughs> just so we can get to the peak of that power curve. A couple more horsepower. A little bit more quality in there. I'm happy with that. Happy with that. Let's go and move on to drive type. We want all-wheel drive. I want all-wheel drive on this car. That all-wheel drive traction will be good for the... Ooh, okay, no, we're fine. It's sorted out the front end of the car. Uh, it will be good for the... Oh, I was putting the engine in. For the getawaying. Uh, there is our engine. Actually, you know, it's not as tighter a fit as I've had with a lot of engines. It's the length of the engine that's the problem, which, of course, it will be with an inline six here. Uh, I don't actually know what it's getting caught on. There's a decent amount of space in there. I don't actually know if there's a way of removing the body so you can look at how the engine fits in the chassis uh, in, in all of this. There might be there might be a way that I am that I am missing. Of course, we're going to want a manual uh, five or six speed gearbox. Uh, I quite like having, I, I've I've quite like having a six speed gearbox in a car now. Of course, my first two cars, the Clio and MX Five, would have had five speeds. Now I've got the RX Eight. Having a, having a six speed car, I've got so used to having a six speed car, it's quite bad going back into one without six gears. Because every so often you go fishing for the sixth gear and then panic and remember that there isn't one there. So. <laughs> Yeah, I have done that uh, embarrassingly. Anyway, uh, <laughs> top speed. Well, this race is about 180 miles an hour. That is a lot of miles an hour uh, in you know in this car. It's up there with the German super saloons, uh, super estates, I should say, the AMGs and the BMWs, uh, M series cars of this world, which is what we want, certainly speed wise. Uh, differentials. We want sportiness, we want drivability up, so we'll go for a geared uh, LSD. We don't have the option for the electronic LSDs yet. The era that we're building in, they're not around. Power distribution is currently 50-50. Uh, we will see... Uh, we'll, we'll see what it says. It comes up with these little warnings when we finish with the car. Tyres. We're going to go for some medium compound tyres. 
We want the drivability, the comfort. Uh, Off-road isn't terrible. Uh, we're not going to go for God, I don't know how specific off-road tyres on this. But, you know, if we happen to go across a field at some point with this, it's nice to know that it's not going to be completely and utterly useless. Let's get some uh, decent-sized tyres on. There's a fact that the wheel with the fitment on this car is not too bad at all from standard uh, with these uh, with these wheels and... That just general size is 225s two uh, at the front, 2.3s two, three, two, three on the back is, is pretty good going. Uh, I guess we will go We'll go for some alloy wheel. Uh, no, maybe we'll keep it on steel wheels, actually. For now, again, extra strength. Extra strength for bouncing across fields if desperately needed. Brakes, vented discs at the front. We're going to want some decent brakes, of course. Uh, <laughs> vented discs at the front. Maybe we'll go for uh, solid discs at the back. Again, a little bit of cost cutting when, when we can get it on the car. Uh, pad type. We are going to want it to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit more effective. Maybe we'll go. Uh, ooh, maybe we'll go uh, 6040. I tend to like to have round numbers for the brake bias. 6040 on that seems good to me. Again, we can come back to all of that. Do we fit it with an off-road? I might fit it with an off-road skid tray. I don't. Know. <laughs> uh, does add a bit of money, but again, it's extra protection for those hairy getaway moments. We're not going to have active. Wings and cooling flaps. Not going to worry about that. Uh, seats at the, in the back. Yeah, I guess we want to go for three. If we, if for whatever need, whatever moment we need a five-man crew, the more the more the better. Uh, we can't add seats in the back, but not that we would because we need that load space. Interior. I guess we're going to go with standard. You know, standard interior. Again, make it blend in to the to the scenery. Standard. Where for a star? Uh, yeah, uh, ninety-six. I'm trying to think. 96, we would have had probably CD players possibly going on in cars. I'm trying to think what cars would have been new in that era. Maybe you would still have been stuck with cassettes. I don't know. We'll stick, we'll stick with standard. Right. Power steering. Uh, we're probably going to want variable hydraulic. Again, drivability, sportiness is what we're after here. So, yeah, let's go. We're, or, I mean, okay, none is sportiness, but drivability, sorry, we're down. So, yeah, variable on that. We will go for... Uh, driver assists on this car. Uh, we're going to want all of the help that we can get. Safety, well, there is a chance that we're going to crash, so standard 90s in all of that. Well, there's a chance that we'll be bumped around by stuff. Um, still not any warnings coming up, which is good. Now, springs. We want decent drivability and we want decent sportiness without being horrendously expensive. So active sport is 700 compared to standard, which is 22. Not sure we quite want active suspension. Well, I mean, you want active suspension, but it's very expensive. I think I might just go for the standard suspension. Uh, it's a little bit down in terms of drivability, but we don't... Yeah, we, we just go for standard on this. Uh, we can go for a little bit more sportiness with uh, adaptive uh, dampers or gas mono. It's a fair fair expense. We might go spend a little bit on the dampers. We'll go for some adaptive ones. Uh, we can get semi-active sway bars as well. Up the drivability, up the sportiness. That is all good. Oh, look at that. Apparently this is a convertible sport budget. It's not a convertible. I'll tell you that much right now. It is not a convertible car over here. 15 miles a gallon. Not the worst thing I've ever built. Not the worst thing I've ever built at all. Uh, the rear brake force is low compared to grip. So bigger rear brakes is needed. I I can do that. Yoink! Uh, is that going to please people? Is that... Uh, yeah, it's up to our drivability value. Not apparently up to our overall sportiness. Better brakes is not up the overall sportiness. Uh, rear brakes is still... Do we have a full piston brakes back there then? Um, I can't actually make that any bigger. How, uh, I guess maybe up the pad type? Sure. Okay. Um, <laughs> the other things... Uh, front brake force is very high. Oh! Oops, I was doing the front brakes. My bad. Whoopsie. Rear brakes need to go up a bit. Uh, <laughs> helps if you read the damn thing. <laughs> cars, the car's load capacity is low for the cargo volume. Increase, uh, consider increasing the ride height or spring stiffness. Uh, let's go increase the ride height, maybe? Maybe it is obviously it's not apparently too happy with the car being low. I do kind of want to get the car more tending towards... Uh, ooh, drivability up or... Yeah, <laughs> I want to get this. This will go. Ooh, hold on. What happened there? Okay, maybe it just it just freaked out. I thought I broke the entire car by changing one of the settings here. Can we? Uh, oh, I was misclicking. Oh, okay. So we go front camber at one point six, and it go. Oh, <laughs> front camber at one point six, and you blow the tires to bits. Let's not do that then. Uh, can we? Oh, that's upping. I was trying to get the car to 
trend to over. Uh, we can get it to trend to oversteer if we give it positive camber at the front. Let's not give it positive camber at the front. And the front dampers are hard. So I guess we put that down and that increases. Uh, that's doing bad things to other numbers. Uh, yeah, I think it said rear dampers were stiff as well. There we go. That's happy. Employing stiffer. Okay, so stiffer. Stiffer up the sway bars on this. Ah, oh, oh, we almost got oversteer going on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There we go. Oversteer. <laughs> Car terminally oversteers. <laughs> Look, it's going to do one or the other. If I have just ruined a lot of the, uh, the various bits and pieces, I say the various, the, the the market essentially that's going in. Sport budget is a pretty solid choice in in this way. You know, Eighty-two percent. Ignore it in convertible. It's kind of sport. It's kind of a. <laughs> It's not rear-wheel drive, so it must lose points somewhere in in the muscle car area. There we have it. 0 to 60 time at 5.6 seconds is pretty bloody good going. Top speed 178 miles an hour. It does weigh almost two tons. It is always going to be a heavy car. Let's face it. Uh, passenger compartment volume, yeah, decent size in there. It'll carry a thousand one hundred liters, so plenty of gold will go in the back of this car. Material cost is less than ten grand. Which isn't too bad in terms of a, uh, a vehicle build. It's actually not that bad. That's not terrible off-road. Decent enough utility. I think that's a pretty good, pretty good choice of car <laughs> for for all of that. Yeah, I don't know why it's counting as a as a convertible, but yeah, it's kind of in around the sports area, sport sport budget. Isn't that isn't that uh, isn't that expensive? Utility sport premium. It's a utility premium. It's kind of it's just about in those areas. In fact, if we go to through for Winnie, we're oh, we're a perfect track car. Look at that! <laughs> it's an amazing track car. Sure, my all-wheel drive estate is an amazing track car. It's terrible here, absolutely awful. Uh, I can never build anything to go to here. I don't know why, but for Winnie is where we want to go. It's perfect in a whole bunch of categories. It's almost a GT car. <laughs> well, I actually really like this car. I'm really pleased with it. Shall we send it around? Uh, send it around the old. Uh, Test track. Uh, what was the last thing that we try to remember? The cars that we we built, like 120. I actually got a bit of paper written down with one of the times. 26. I had my oh, classic Le Mans car. Yeah, 126.1 was the time set by the classic Le Mans cars. I did a 121 with something that I recently recently built. What is the biggest state car going to do? 27.4. It's not as fast as my classic Le Mans cars, sadly. Uh, however, it will carry a hell of a lot more stuff. It is also a hell of a lot cheaper to buy, a hell of a lot cheaper to build and so on, and it won't stand out that much. I mean, it will stand out when it's doing 180 miles an hour, but for normal normal driving, that's not a bad getaway car. That's not a bad getaway car whatsoever. I like it. <laughs> I Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. And we've used a slightly different engine, haven't gone for the crazy turbocharged rope. Hey, we even get 15 miles a gallon. What more could you want from uh, from a getaway car? Well, that is uh, that is going to be it for this uh, for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.